Hey guys, it's uh, the Classic Tycoon here, and we're starting a new series, um, a new Let's Play series, and we're going to do Whitewater Park. So, let's check this out. Um, 900 guests in the park at the end of October, year 3, with the park rating at least 600. Park with some awesome water-based rides that need some expansion or something like that. Okay, so this park, um, it does, it has some pretty good water slides, um, or some water rides looking at whitewater slide right now i'm gonna go through and in this episode i'm honestly just gonna do a bunch of maintenance stuff that needs to be done around this park you can see the first thing i did was i increased the price of the whitewater slide i'm gonna go ahead and go around and do that for every ride in the park um, just based on their excitement rating go ahead and go around and just increase the price of the rides to match the excitement rating the guests will happily pay that price um, at least for the first few years all right so there's no point in not doing that you're going to be funding your future roller coasters um, a lot faster if you do that it'll make the park a lot easier for you we're going to do, do that for every ride even including the bumper boats here which are called whitewater boats all right so whitewater park what do i think about this place it's all right it's not my favorite park to build in honestly um man i i don't know the parks that start with a bunch of rides in them i don't particularly like that much i like to build my own rides you know and have room for my own rides when there's this big water slide here it's gives me less room to put my own stuff in so but it is what it is so all right next thing on the agenda here we're going to put no entryway signs at the um, front of every exit so that guests aren't just wandering especially some of these exit lines or pathways are super long so I don't want my guests just wandering off down there they'll get unhappy because they're not doing anything and they're just hitting dead ends so make sure you do that guys on all your rides not just the ones at the beginning of the, the park but when you start building rides just put no entryway signs into the uh, leading to the exits, so that guests do not get lost, um, or at least they have less of a chance of getting lost if you do that. So that's a couple of the problems in the park that you have at the start. Um, a few more things: there are uh, zero litter bins, so I've got to go through and fill up the entire park with litter bins can't have too many litter bins honestly you know I do a lot of litter bins in my parks because they're just useful you know to get the having the trash in the litter bins and not on the pathway is super helpful one of the worst things you can do for your park rating is have litter all over your park so handyman can help with that a little bit but you know it's better to prevent the problem um, by having as many litter bins as possible so, again, there were zero litter bins in this park at all. I had the same problem in Diamond Heights. At least there was, like, four litter bins in that whole park. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. But you pretty much have to do this for every park now. So, every time you start a park, if it's got pathways, make sure you put those litter bins in to prevent the park rating from dropping significantly. Next thing on the agenda. Um... Checking out the staff, we've got one mechanic and one handyman. So we're gonna have to, and that handyman is just mowing grass right now, so that's pointless. Let's go ahead and throw him on the pathway, take away that mow grass, and let's hire a few more handymen. I'm gonna increase it to five handymen. And I'm going to just throw them in all different parts of the park. So now we got a few guys walking around there. And then just a couple more mechanics uh, to go around the park. Next thing on the agenda, we're going to go ahead and go into all the rides here. All of them, except for the bumper boats, I'm going to um, adjust their inspection time to be every 10 minutes rather than every 30 minutes because these are premium rides. These are all rides that are going to bring, bring in money. So you want them um, running as well as possible. Um, 
and as much as possible. You want as much down, you know, as little downtime as possible. Let's go ahead and pay back the loan now. No point in keeping that up. It's just going to cost you money. I know it's not much, but might as well just not be paying back money. You, know. you want to be debt free. You want to be debt free in real life. You want to be debt free in this game. Let's go into the research funding. I'm going to go ahead and unclick scenery and transport rides. I'm not going to be using those at all in this park, so we're fine there. There is also no food or drinks in this park, so we're going to have to build a couple of food and drink stalls to make up for that. So let's build a burger bar and let's build a drink stall at the entrance. Tried to fit this underneath the water slide here. I wish it could. I don't know. I don't know why it can't. It seems like it's plenty tall, right? I tried the burger bar as well right here, but even the burger bar is just too tall to fit. So can't do it right there, unfortunately. So we'll have to add these with a little gap between them. Not a big deal. Okay. So we'll have both of those, and then let's put in um, some restrooms as well. We gotta make sure to do that. So, and then as you guys know, I always charge 10 cents for my restrooms. So we'll do that, same price throughout the park, open it up, and we'll put in a few more restrooms. Um, I always put in more restrooms than I do food and drink stalls. Just having them around the park is helpful. Uh, so that guests aren't complaining that they can't find a restroom. In this case, I think that this will be pretty good. And you probably won't need any more than the ones that you put in right at the beginning. Um, unless people start complaining, then you can try to throw in one somewhere else. So Let's find a good spot for a food and drink stall on this side of the park. I think we already did the burger bar, so let's go ahead and do the fruity ices stall. Fruity ices. Fruity ices. Sounds like, uh... <laughs> Never mind. That could be a bad joke. A fruity ices. <laughs> okay. We'll increase the price of those a little bit. I don't want to go too crazy on increasing the price of that. Um, let's put another drink stall. Not enough cash. We're at 200. We need 50 more dollars. That shouldn't be a problem in getting it. So let's just jump right back in. And there we are. So we have now taken care of all of that. Um, trying to think if there's anything else that needs to be taken care of. It'd be nice to have an information kiosk. You can see we have a thunderstorm coming up. It'd be nice to have one. Well, well, we just don't. We don't have an information kiosk yet. As soon as we do, we'll put one in. Um, I don't know if this park has any land available for sale. Let's go ahead and check that out. See if we have any land. As far as it looks, we do not. So no land available for expansion. Let's see if we have any construction rights available. Ooh, nothing there as well. So we, you get what you get. Um, it's a pretty short scenario, so we we would probably wouldn't need to expand anyway. Three year scenario. All right, uh, we just developed a looping roller coaster. We'll see what we do with that in the next uh, episode. But anyways, thanks for watching this one, you guys. In the next one, we'll probably put in some you know beginning rides, some. Gentle rides, a couple throw rides, something like that, and then we'll kick this series off um, and get going with it. So, thanks for watching this one, you guys. If you have any questions, let me know. Please give me a like if you did like this episode. Subscribe if you have not already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.